Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of graphing functions and identifying features. This is standard A.3c in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 54 of the 2022 released STAR test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have linear function k here represented, has a 0 of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 6. So we need to find which graph best represents k. Well, we know what a y-intercept is, so that's pretty self-explanatory. It's that 0 that we might not remember. So let's go ahead and identify this y-intercept. So this y-intercept usually shows up in the slope-intercept form when we are trying to look at an equation that way. We see this y equals mx plus b. It's that b right there that ends up being the y-intercept. But What does it actually mean to be a y-intercept? Well, it's where the line, the function, but in this case the function is represented by this line. It's where it crosses the or intercepts the y-axis. And so it's going to be represented with uh, an x value of 0 and then the y value is just going to be whatever the y value is. Now they tell us the y value is 6. So these are going to be the actual coordinates but most of the time we'll just kind of shorten that down and say our y-intercept is just going to be 6 because we know the x value is 0. So let's, let's take a look. I've got a, a, a y-intercept right here of 6, so f looks good. I've got a y-intercept here of g, at g of 6, so that also looks good. Now you notice I've got a, a y-intercept here of negative 2 for h, so that's not looking good. They've actually got this x-intercept. That x-intercept is is actually 6. And then I've got a negative 6 over here. So not only is it not the y-intercept, um, but I've got a, an x-intercept of negative 6 on j. So I've eliminated h and j. So if I didn't know what that 0 was, right, I can go ahead and guess. But obviously we're not going to guess. So what is a 0? Well, a 0 is looking at this. So when you're f of x, your function of x, equals 0, right? We're wondering, what's that x value? What x value causes the f of x to equal 0? Now, your f of x is really just measuring your range, right? And then your x is going to be your domain, because your x is your independent variable, and your f of x is your dependent variable. Well, a lot of times we just refer to our range as y. So the 0 is what happens when y equals 0. And they just kind of shorten that to 0, when y equals 0. Well, when y equals 0, guess what? You are right here on the x-axis. So the 0 is another word for the x-intercept. Not sure why it has a separate name, but it just does. So it's the x-intercept. So if your 0 is your x-intercept because y equals 0, it's on that x-axis line, then we know what that means. Then that's where the line crosses, not the y-axis, but the x-axis, because your y is going to be 0. And they already... They give it to us. They give us an x value of negative 2. So our x-intercept, or our 0, is simply going to be negative 2. Now we can go back and look at f and g, and you see here that g, right, that's got an, an x-intercept or a 0 of negative 2, but we're looking at 3 right here for f. That obviously doesn't work. So our answer here with a y-intercept of 6 and a 0 of negative 2 is going to be g.